Hello and welcome to another Crafty Snipers Airsoft videos. Today's review subject is going to be Lincolnshire Airsoft Club. Now, as you know, I've been doing airsoft for just over three years and just about 99% of all my airsoft matches have been through Lincolnshire Airsoft Club. So I thought it was about time to do a video review on LAC. Now, to be absolutely honest with you, I've been having a wee bit of trouble trying to come up with a script system or uh, a way of making this video proper. Unlike a gun review, where I can actually have the gun in front of me and I can run through all the facts on it, um, obviously I'm not at LAC at the moment, and therefore I, it's just a bit difficult trying to come up with a review. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through what happens to me during a day at Link to Airsoft Club. This is start from the early morning till it's time to go home. Uh, I then run through what Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire Airsoft Club has to offer to the Airsoft player. So, first of all, my day at Lincolnshire Airsoft Club. Now, me personally, I always love to get to wherever it is I'm going. This doesn't have to be Airsoft related, but it can be anything in life. I always like to get there ridiculously early because it gives me time to sort things out. Now, in Airsoft, as we all know, we all need time to sort things out, whether it's load our guns, get the magazines all sorted out, get your kit sorted out, get your weapons sorted out, get it all, all your stuff put away into the right place. It takes time, and some people do this at home, I cannot be bothered at, must be about half past four, excuse me, must be about half past four in the morning, I can't be bothered to do that then, so I just chuck all my stuff in the back of a discovery and uh, go off up to the match. So like I said, I get there nice and early and get a park up and like I say it gives me a chance to first of all wake up and second of all get all my batteries sorted out for the day, get all my kit sorted out um, and just basically you know just it also help, allows me to help LAC out as well with the setting up of certain stuff. If we go to our paintball site for instance we haven't really got a shop so everything that they need has to be hauled out of a van and put into the area that's going to be the shop for the day. Obviously at Curtin, there is a fixed location, so we don't need to do that. But anyway, um, I get there so early, I can get my kit sorted out, I can help with certain things, um, and basically it just gives me a chance to mingle around with the other players. Now, at a certain point, I can't remember what time it normally is, but um, the shop will obviously open, and as a member of LAC, obviously you, get, you have to pay um, and you get your little um, game card, which I'll go on to in, in, in another part of this video. Uh, you also get your dead flag and you then get to do a little bit more mingling around and checking, extra checking that everything's happy. Um, the next thing you'll be doing is your chronoing. Now, if you rent a gun, you won't need a chrono because the guns obviously belong to LAC. But if you are a member and therefore bringing your own weapons, you'll need to chrono them because there is a limit to what guns can actually do in airsoft. Now your standard AEGs are going to be your usual 350 feet per second limit. Your DMRs for the club have to be uh, locked to semi-automatic, then they're allowed to go to 400 feet per second, but you also have a 35 meter minimum engagement distance, so you can't shoot anyone with a DMR uh, less than 35 meters. If you want to go to a bolt action sniper rifle for instance you are then allowed to go to 500 feet per second but you have a 35 meter engagement distance as well. So it's same as the DMR, so the snipery style weapons there's quite a few limitations but then again the snipers will outrange your standard AG so it's, it swings and round that. So anyway like I say I turn up with a standard AG, go to the chrono station and you have to chrono with their ammunition, because obviously they know that is 0.2 ammunition. Uh, you chrono, take a few shots, go for the chrono, if it comes with a 350, well hey, brilliant, you get a little tang, you put that on the end of your rifle, somewhere on your rifle, um, and then you are, you know, you have to go back and back to the car park and do some chatting, you know, it's, it's hard life. Um, if your gun is way too hot, so if we're talking, you know, three, 370 up, um, then your gun will be flatly refused. Obviously, that is too much uh, of an FPS difference from 350. Now, if you can get, if your gun has a quick spring change, for instance, and you can change the spring, then you change the spring. If you come back and it's come under 350, then yeah, fine. That gun is now allowed as long as that spring stays in there. Uh, if your gun is shooting at 355, 358, something like that, then what is generally said is go to one side 
blast out a lot of rounds, go for a high cap, something like that, you know, and see if you can bring the FPS down. Uh, especially if you've got new bits in the gun, uh, new internals, sometimes the FPS can be higher, um, and then for all the ammunition it settles down to a happy under 350 limit. Again, you'll then get to re-chrono your gun, if it's under 350, wahoo, you get your tag. Uh, if it's still above, then you're probably not going to be able to use that gun. So, once everybody's been chronoed, uh, or should I say every gun's been chronoed, you will then be taken for your safety briefing. Now, the safety briefing is very important. Um, obviously, it describes some of the site, what you're going to come up against out there. Um, it also goes through rules for grenades, for instance. Uh, if a grenade lands with uh, lands on the floor, obviously, and it goes off, everything in a five meter circle around it is dead, unless you're behind hard cover, that kind of stuff. Um, Generally speaking, like I said, I've been doing LAC matches for over three years. I know the safety breathing pretty much word by word, but it's still something that everybody has to attend. It's very important. Um, and, you know, it, it gives the new players as well some kind of guide as to what is about to happen over the next six or so hours. Now, once your safety breathing has been done, you'll then be split up, usually speaking, into two teams. Uh, you have a red team and a yellow team and you'll then have a mission briefing. Now sometimes the two teams will be kept in the, what we call the, you know, the buffer zone between the active uh, war zone, for want of a better word, and the safe zone. Um, most of the time, one of the teams will be taken away to the other end of the site, uh, which is the end of the jump off point, and they'll be, given their safe, uh, they'll be given their mission brief out there. So because the mission briefs can sometimes be different, it's basically, one team's not going to want to know what the other mission brief is for the other team. So, you've had your safety brief, you've had your mission brief, your gun's chronoed, you're all ready to rock and roll. What is it that Link's Rest or Club is going to have in store for you out there uh, in the battlefield? Well, mostly speaking, on a Sunday, um, there will be the matches where each team will have uh, some objectives to collect. Now these objectives can range from little tiny ammo cans, I've got one of them that holds my magazines in it, um, all the way up to uh, bigger ammo cans, which I God knows what they held in the real life, but they're out there. Uh, and it also goes up to a full-size rapier missile. Now the rule of thumb for LAC when it comes to things that need to be picked up is how many, um, how many carry handles does it have? If it has no carry handles, then it's one person. If it has two carry handles, two people. If it has six carry handles, six people. If it's a rapier missile system, you need about a small battalion to try and move these things. And you usually need another attachment, which has, like I say, eight plus arm pe um, carry handles on it. You take that to the, to the rapier missile, so you then load the missile onto that system, and then you can move it to wherever you've been told to. Um, you don't run when you're holding these things, whether it be the small ammo can, and God forgive it, you will never be able to run with a rapier missile, trust me. Um, and you've got, like I say, got to take it from wherever it was dropped off to another point. This could be in the middle of a firefight, you know, you could have to drop it off at a certain point and then guard it for X amount of time for a heli helicopter to come in and pick it up and take it away. Uh, this also could be taking it back to your permanent drop-off point, the first place where you jumped off in the morning and at the end of the match these all these objectives that you've captured are worth points obviously the little things are worth like let's say two points the rapier missile system can be worth you know 10 points something stupid like that and at the end of the day points are total who's got the most points wins um, on top of this you may be thinking that when it comes to being killed or shot um, what are you gonna do because if you're shot you could be quite a bit of distance away from your permanent regen point, which is the jump off point that you went to in the morning. Well, LAC's got you covered here because we have DOM flags, so domination flags. And I think there's something like five or six domination flags littered around the whole site. Now, what are domination flags? Well, domination flags is quite simple. It's going to be a flag, if it's a rope basically, with on one end of the rope is going to be a yellow flag. On the other end of the rope, it's a red flag. Now, at the start of the day, these are neutral. They are both flag colours down. However, say for instance, I'm a red player. 
I come across a Dom flag and it's in a neutral position. So I can move the flag so that the red is up high. Now, the, if the red flag is flying high, that means any dead reds can respawn off this flag. As long as the flag's not under fire, so if BBs aren't whistling past this flag point, then you can respawn off this flag. You just touch it, put your dead flag away, bang, you're back in the match. So you could have died, um, say, a couple of, um, say a couple of minutes away from that, uh, that flag. You just walked over. It's given you time to reload your gun, take on some water, it's always very important, and you just touch the flag or stand next to it, put your dead flag away, and you're back in the match. If, for instance, that flag is showing red and you're a yellow player, you obviously can't respawn off it. But here's the joker about the, dead, about the um, domination flags. Said, yet, uh, said yellow player is walking up, he sees the red flag flying there and there's no reds nearby. Well obviously that's an advantage to reds because that's a respawn point. It's not an advantage to a yellow team, so what's he going to do? Well it's quite simple, change the colour. So we'll just scoot the flag back down the other way so the yellow flag is now showing and now that becomes a yellow respawn point under the same rules that, that it was when it was a red respawn. So you've got many little firefights happening all around the side. Not only are you fighting over an objective, which like I say can consist of a little ammo can to a great big honking rocket, or you can be firefighting over the domination flags because they're important. If all the domination flags are showing, let's say, reds, then the reds have a massive uh, advantage over yellows because yellows have got a long way to walk back to their respawn point to come all the way back in again. Um, they're probably going to be out of commission for you know a good 20 minutes or so in total and by the time you got back to your firefight you're going to be knackered because you're probably trying to run and all that you know it's, it's just a it's a big negative so the first thing you're going to be doing firefighting over the dom flags cover them then go after the objectives now you might be wondering what kind of terrain is that curtain to well like i say it's described as a woodland site a green site um at curtain two we have some woods, we have a wood called Little Wood, which is a little wood, would you believe? Uh, it's not actually that quite small, it's actually quite big. Uh, it's quite long, but it's quite narrow. Um, but you can have a dense foliage firefight, you know, in, 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 that, in the Little Wood. You then have what we call the Triangle of Death, which is also, no, sorry, which is called the LZ even. And the LZ is a triangular piece of field. It's quite huge. You can't shoot from one end to the other end, unless you're a sniper but you have this open field. Now, surrounding this open field is a road on one side, little wood on one side, track on the other, and a ridge running across the top. So, trying to cover the terrain, trying to get across this LZ without someone noticing you is quite difficult. So you get to the ridge top, uh, you get, well, you get to the bottom of the ridge, and you look up and you just think, what the heck's up there? Well, on the ridge, in the middle of summer anyway, you've got, again, a massive forest growing over it, uh, and a very high uh, ridge line, which if you're stood on the bottom end in the, in the LZ looking up, means you generally cannot see anybody who is either set up there waiting for you to try and walk up it, or anyone who's walking across. You just can't see in the middle of summer, it's too dense. But if you're on the ridge top looking down, you can actually start picking out people walking across the LZ. So, on top of the ridge, what else have we got? Well, we have the salt flats, which are a massive open flatland, which has an island of greenery and bushes and trees and goblins. So it literally, literally is an island in the middle of nowhere, which has a dom, a dom flag in that. Um, obviously, you have no camouflage or anything like that when you're covering the um, when you're covering the salt flats. But sometimes, you know, you can get, you can get to the island without being noticed uh, behind the. Uh, salt flats you have a ridge and it goes up to a massive open greenland with lots of trees lots of sporadic trees uh, so you can cover train quite quickly but you can also have a very, rather dense foliage again and lots of thick trees uh, that cover quite a few people if they want to hide like me um, i don't physically know the, the size of uh curtain two but I can, i'm trust me when i say this if you're going to go and think, oh, I'm just going to go running all the time and I'm going to cover all this terrain, you're going to be dead by the afternoon, well, by lunchtime. So that's curtain two. That's our main site. That's, uh, that's the site you're 99% of the time is going to be. 
On top of that, we have Combat Zone. Now, Combat Zone is not run by Lincolnshire Airsoft Club. It's another, uh, it's another, it's another club, and it's a paintball club. Now, you might wonder how an airsoft site and, an, and a paintball site actually are trying to work together. Um, but we're allowed to go there every now and again, every few Sundays or so, and you get to firefight in a paintball site. Now, you might think this is a bit naff because airsoft guns obviously outrange paintball guns. Um, you might personally think that you don't like paintball, so why would I want to go to a paintball site? The thing is, with a, with combat zone, is the, the engagements are a lot closer, so you're guaranteed to have a firefight. This is guaranteeing you to put out a load of ammunition. And they also have buildings, which buildings are brilliant because you can be told to defend this building. And you have an entire team either in the building or just in the surrounding terrain that's around it. Um, and the enemy's job is to go in and try and clear you out. Like I say, it's guaranteeing you a firefight. And when you have something to hide behind, like a, like a building wall and all that, it becomes a lot of fun, trust me. Unfortunately, Combat Zone, like I say, the ranges are a lot closer. So as a sniper stroke recon player, if you're going to go there with a bolt action sniper rifle, you might not have the best of times because, like I said earlier, there's a 35 meter engage minimum engagement distance for your bolt action sniper rifle. Chances are most of your engagements are going to happen inside of 35 meters. So, unless you have either an MP5K or P90 or something else about you that can deal with anyone up close, your sniper rifle might not be the best choice in, uh, of weapon for combat zone. A lot of other matches that happen on Combat Zone, they also have um, building structures to fight over. It becomes a bit of a... it's a bit, it's a bit different. We don't have many buildings at, um, at Curtain 2. We have hay, hay, hay bale structures, or forts as we call them, and they're all around the site. The club is always trying to build more of them. That kind of gives you a bit of a structure to, fire, fire, to fight over. Um, but at Combat Zone we actually have metal structures, we have a church building to firefight over, we have um, numerous uh, two-storey structures uh, that, will, you know, uh, that we will fight over. Uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, uh, there might not be a paintball match happening on that Sunday, so Linkster Airsoft Club gets the free run of the site. Now this is when the real fun begins, because unlike paintball where you, you fight over one little structure, that's your little map, we will just say, right, one team starts in one corner, one team starts in the other corner, the whole site, and you go do your, your objectives, whatever they may be. Um, and that becomes an absolute laugh, because you start getting uh, a lot of, all the buildings are in play. You know, you're not just fighting over one little map, one little map, you have the whole site to fight over. So that's the fun part. Unfortunately, we don't know that we're going to have the whole site to ourselves at Combat Zone, pretty much until like, you know, one or two days before the match is due to happen anyway. So. Most of the time, especially during summer like now, um, the paintballers are obviously there. Um, it's, I, I do love Combat Zone for quite a few reasons. One, we do a very special match, which I'll just get on to in a minute. But another one is the paintball, the kids, the birthday parties. And they're all there, and they get dressed up in their overalls. I mean, I've done paintball, I did paintball at Combat Zone, so I know what it's like. You get dressed up in your overalls, and you get given a paintball gun, and you think, oh, this is brilliant, I've got a paintball gun, and then all of a sudden, only what you deem to be the special forces just walks through. Airsoft players, full camo gear, M4s, AKs, M16, God knows what, and they just, the jaws drop. I walked in once with a Spaz 12 shotgun, and all, all I heard uh, out the side of one of my ears was these kids going, oh my God, what the heck is that? Now, you know, that was just awesome. That's why, uh, that's why I loved airsoft especially airsoft at a paintball site. So, on top of all that, you could be wondering, um, does, Air, does Link to Airsoft Club do any special matches? Well, yes, it would do some special matches. We'd, like I said, we do those standard Sunday matches, but we also have special days. Now, the special days, there's quite a few of them. Um, the biggest special day I can think of off the top of my head is the weekender matches. Now, the clues in the name, it's a whole weekend, so it's not just a Sunday. You got your Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday as an airsoft match. It's not a through match. It's not 48-hour milsim style match. It's you turn up on a Saturday morning. You have a Saturday match, which would be like the same almost as a Sunday. You then come in at uh, say half past four, five o'clock time. The night match on a Saturday night then will start at about around seven-ish uh, if anybody's interested in it. 
you then have that till half past 11 I think it is, or midnight and you then sleep in your deluxe five star tent and you then wake up and do the match all over again on Sunday. Now what they generally do is try to make, if anyone's doing the whole weekend which a lot of people do, they'll try to make your Saturday and your Sunday matches, the big ones, linked together in some way. So there'll be some kind of story, some kind of background going on which is interesting to read at the start of it but when you just get down to it it's just slot the enemy. Um, the rules for the weekend uh, when it comes to paying, okay, you pay, obviously, as me as a, a member, I pay £20 for the walk-on fee. Now, obviously, a weekend, it's £40. So if I pay my £40 on the Saturday morning and I'm camping, I will get this, uh, the Saturday night match free. Now, as it is, I don't do the Saturday night match. I'm getting quite old now, and um, after having a full Saturday having an airsoft match, I need time to relax you know, check over my weapons and all that, and then basically just have fun time with the lads and all that. So what we do is, you have the full Saturday match, you have, that finishes, then we just get, you know, change the normal gear, and then go over to uh, Curtin and Lindsay to the takeaways, grab a Chinese, a pizza, whatnot, you know, there's, there's a good selection of takeaways in Curtin. Uh, we come back, and then it's just, you know, having a few drinks with your mates, having a takeaway. Some people go off and do the night match, that's fine. Um, but we just like to have fun that way. Uh, when it comes to camping, um, you guys won't know this, but I absolutely hate camping. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Never have, never will. Um, but I did want to do the weekenders, so I had to buy myself a tent. Now, I bought myself, I think it's a four to six person size tent. Yes, it's lovely. It's, you know, I, I learned how to build a tent, which, like I said, I've never been in a tent in my life so I had to learn very quickly how to uh, put these tents up and what kind of equipment you need for this this bloody thing um, but what I realized as well is I drive a Land Rover Discovery I don't need the tent I can put all my stuff in the disco and then I can sleep in, this, in it as well so that's my version of tenting I turn up all my stuff all my kits in the back when it comes to sleeping, I just push it over to one side, I can roll the seats out of the way, and there it is, I've got enough space to sleep in the back of a disco. So that's my version of tending. Brilliant. Don't have to build anything, don't have to wake up at two in the morning looking up and the tent's all you know, shaking because I haven't built it properly, don't have to listen to the, wind, uh, the rain and all that. It's, and it's a structure, it's, it's, it's safe. So, that's the weekend that's pretty much covered, in my opinions. Uh, we also do a style of matches, or a few matches, at Combat Zone called Pistol Shotgun Day, we do Gas and Spring Day, uh, we do Limited Ammo Days. Um, they're all, generally speaking, like I say, Combat Zone matches. Now, Pistol Shotgun Day is quite self-explanatory. The only weapons you are allowed is a spring action shotgun and or a pistol. So you can have them both, you can have as many of them as you like, but it's only a pistol or shotgun. Now you may think, oh that's naff, I've got an M4, that reaches 50 odd metres, you know, what am I going to do with a shotgun? I kind of thought that until I tried one of the pistol shotgun days and it is a riot, it's a laugh. It's You shoot someone and then you laugh and they laugh with you because it's quite impressive to shoot anybody with a shotgun in airsoft. Uh, that's, I mean, I love them so much, I ended up with a Tokyo Mui Spaz 12 shotgun. I've got two cheap shotguns that the club was selling at the time. I've got my Glock 17, I've got my Springfield XDM, you know, I, and I bring them all to uh, to have a riot and a pistol shot one day. So when they come up, they're brilliant. Um, gas and spring day, again, it's on the same rules, it's anything that's powered by gas or anything that's powered by a spring. So, if, and, and before we say this, AEG guns, I know there's a spring inside them, it doesn't count. Okay, it's bolt action sniper rifles, them kind of stuff. So use gas guns. It's a bit different on this one because gas, obviously people have gas M4s, gas AKs, they still reach 50 odd metres. Um, my sniper rifle will reach 75, 80 metres, uh, but I don't have the rate of fire what they can put up with. So they're a little bit more work about them. It's fun, don't get me wrong, I love them, uh, but it's a little bit more thinking, especially when I don't have a gas guns or you know uh, gas rifles or anything like that. I've got, the only gas I've got is my handguns. They've got the range of about four metres. Um, but that's, you know, that just makes me think a little bit harder. So, that's those style matches. I've covered the night matches, they're obviously all fun. The, one of the best matches I ever went to was a night zombie match, and obviously around Halloween time. 
Um, I went there, I didn't know what to expect, I just thought it was going to be a standard night match. Um, I personally call them night ops. I have my own night ops loadout, it involves a P90 with mid caps uh, and a very light load on me so I can move quickly uh, and not have to be weighed down some with, uh, with a lot of kit that I normally have on. Um, as it turned out, it was anything but a normal match because there were zombies. There was the two teams, but there was also a team of zombies out there already. And if they touched you, you became the, well, the living dead. Um, you had different rules if you were the living dead. If you were shot by a living player, you could either rage at them, scare the living crap out of them, which they did, um, or you stood there for an X amount of time that you counted and then you carried on. You, you can't kill a zombie, obviously, uh, especially in airsoft. So we've done that match and that was an absolute riot. So, you know, if you're any time around Halloween time, look out for an LAC zombie match, they're awesome. Um, that's the matches covered and that's obviously the sites covered. Now you're probably wondering what LAC themselves has to offer. Now I've, I've talked about the membership um, offer that we have um, and that's, you know, quite simply, um, you become a member. If you think that LAC is the club for you, you pay five pounds to become a member. You had to have done I can't remember how many matches it is in, 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 I think it's about in eight weeks, I think it is, but you have to cover so many matches. Um, after that goes through, your paperwork comes out and you get a card that has your ugly mug photo on it and a unique LAC number on it. That is the card you will show every single LAC match to get your game card. Now, I said about this earlier on in the video, there's game card. Game cards are quite simple. This is your benefit to being a member over a non-member. Okay, a member goes to the match on a Sunday or whenever and says right here's my 20 pound uh, here's my game card it's still in date and all that kind of stuff uh, and they will say thank you very much for the 20 pound and they'll give you a game card now you collect these once you get three of them so that's three different matches on three different um, uh, days you will then be given uh, sorry you will not be given anything but on the, when you've got the third card on the fourth match you go in and you say right here's my 20 pound uh, sorry um, here's my uh, my unique card, you know, saying I'm me. Uh, this is my three cards, they'll take them back off you, and your walk on fee is waived. So, for me personally, I've got a boatload of ammunition in the cupboard somewhere, I've got umpteen, um, um, umpteen guns, so I can turn up and on my fourth match I pay nothing because I don't need my ammunition, I don't need gas, uh, I may pay for some sweets or some, you know, very sugary drink. That's all you'll pay for. So, that's your benefit over over a non-member who obviously would have to pay £20 every time they play. Um, on top of that, you probably wondered what the club has to offer. Well, like I say, it's got a shop. Uh, they do the ammunition. You know, we have twos and two fives. They do sometimes have some heavy ammunition, the two eights, maybe some threes. Uh, I think I've seen some three twos somewhere in the shop, but you know, I could be wrong. Um, they sell all the protection, protective gear you need. So if you want a full face mask, yeah, they sell them there in all the different camouflage patterns if you're that, in if that interested in your different pattern. They will also sell fake uh, helmets that you can wear because, you know, if you want to have a helmet that has part of your loadout, then LAC is the way to go. They did have a couple of um, tactical vests, uh, style like I wear. Uh, they're up for sale as well. Like I say, they're selling the chocolates, they're selling the drinks, all that kind of stuff. So that's all covered. The, the LAC shop, brilliant. Uh, run by some very nice, kind people, I must admit. Um, then they have a gun tech. And the gun tech is literally, his job is to service your gun. And any problems with your gun, go to the gun tech. So you go up to him and you say, right, my gun stopped firing. You know, all right, we'll take it out to the range, we'll have a look at it. And he'll always have an opinion of it. And nine times out of ten, the opinion is correct. Okay, I've been doing like say stuff for over three years. I've had some humdingers of some guns exploding on me. And I've gone up to him and said, look, that's the problem. Do you know what's up with it? And within about five minutes, he says, yeah, X, Y, Z wrong. Uh, this is what you need to repair it. And your choice is quite simple. You can go out there now, go into the airsoft world on the internet and buy the parts and put it in yourself and risk, unless you know what an airsoft gun runs like, uh, you could actually break the thing very quickly, very easily. However, you can then say, well, no, I want the club to deal with it, I want the gun tech to deal with it. So what he'll do is he'll order the pieces in, you will then pay a charge of obviously the fitting, um, and you get your gun back and it will be working. Okay, it may take a bit of a while if you have, to, you have those little electrical problems that just 
intermittent, they're the annoying ones, but if say your hop system broke, or your gear broke, or something like that, he will take your gearbox to pieces. Oh, that's the one that's broken. Right, I'll put, I've ordered a new one, but I'll also check the rest of the gearbox to make sure that there was no other damage done when this piece went kaboom. Like I said, um, I still haven't been able to give him a broken gun and he say, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's wrong with it. He always knows what's going on with these guns. Uh, likewise, if uh, anyone does airsoft for a long time, will realise that your hops, your hot rubber, your booking, will disintegrate and fade and it will just run, you know, run out. It just doesn't work. You say, right, well, what hot booking would you recommend? And they'll say, well, this is what I recommend. Usually it's a G&G Green. Um, I've got someone in the workshop. I'll tell you what, I'll take the gun. You pay for the, the new hot booking and how much that is. Uh, he'll also clean your gun, clean your barrel, check your hop system's working 100% um, and give your gun a service. So if you're in the if you're in the need of servicing a gun, let the gun take now. Um, basically, I think that, I, off the top of my head, I think that's all I've got to say about LAC. I, you know, I can't say any more nice things about them. Um, I started over three years ago knowing diddly squat about Airsoft. I basically thought it was Call of Duty in 3D. I still do think it's, I think I actually now think it's Battlefield in 3D, but, um, but now, I know a lot about airsoft and because I keep going to the same sites I've become quite a natural player at disappearing in the foliage and not, you know, not making myself such an easy target. Um, the, the members I've always had, uh, I've always been very friendly towards me whenever I've said that's a nice gun, Can I, you know, do you mind if I pick it up and I'm like, yeah yeah no worries, you want to take it out to the range, you know, take out a few shots with it. It's usually quite bad because I end up buying them, um, but you know, that's just airsoft in general. Um, I honestly don't think I'll ever leave LAC uh, for another club. I know there's probably members out there in the internet world who are saying, well, my club is better because X, Y, and Z. Well, that's that's fine. That's your opinions. I'm just, you know, LAC to me has been very, very kind to me. Um, and they've let me, they've teach me, taught me even, how to do airsoft and how to be a little bit more, you know, tactical in my ways. Um, like I said, I can't say any more nice things about LAC. Um, that'll probably be the end of the review. Um, I just want to say, obviously, a big thanks to anyone who's still watching this mammoth video. Um, also, put up on the Facebook site, I'm doing, I am going to do this time, I really do mean it, a series of question and answers with me. Um, if you want to have your question answered, feel free, uh, pull out a PM or uh, put it underneath uh, on the YouTube page or on uh, in the Facebook page, preferably the Facebook page, if you just knock it up as a, as a message, I'll obviously definitely be able to get it. Um, and I will put a video together with, I don't know, two or three questions, depending on how many questions I get, I'll split them up, and I will answer every single question, I guarantee it. Um, as for when I will make the video, I do believe the next video I'm making is a review on the Tokyo Murui M320A1 grenade launcher. Uh, I'm also going to do some photos up of the rifle that I've got built with some new pieces in it, which is going to be housing or holding the M320A1 grenade launcher. So that looks like a beast at the moment. Uh, other than that, we're going to do some photos of airsoft matches when I get back to doing some matches. It's been quite a while now. I think it'll be about a month now since I've done the last airsoft match uh, due to other commitments. I am itching to get back into the airsoft world and like I said, I'm itching to put out some photos of match plays and I'm also itching to do some more gun reviews. All I can say is I will do the videos and like I said, on, on the question and answers, I promise I will do them. So like I say, put up your comments. Anyhow, I will see you guys next time. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe to the videos.